Tell us, um, what was it like winning an All Star? Was it, did it bother you? Did it were you delighted? Was it? Yeah, look again, it was probably nothing that I ever chased um, or or dreamt about um, growing up as a kid or and have something that I haven't thought about um, while playing. Again, I think it's one of them achievements that you probably look back on um, more so than an achievement that you go looking for. Again, our main focus and my main focus uh, from growing up and, and to now is it's about winning all Ireland's and I suppose just it. The All Star was just a individual achievement to go along with that, but again, nothing that I would have would have focused on and, and won. nothing that I'll I'll dwell on um, over the next couple of couple of months and years, you know. You gave an interview to Dermot Crow, I think, after the All Ireland final uh, last year, and you were talking about nearly already your motivation had moved on to twenty twenty one, and I'm just wondering. Um, you would have played minor on the same panel with Jack and Paul Mannion, uh, yeah. and they kind of came very quickly into the senior setup. Yeah. And whatever you know, for different reasons, they've kind of stepped away at the moment. Do you think because it took you that much longer, really, until twenty seventeen to establish yourself in the group, that the, such thoughts wouldn't even come into your head at this stage? Such what? Such thoughts that you know, like, oh God, I've, I need to step away, the commitment, etc. No, you longer contribute to that. Look, I, I would say so again. Look, at, I've, I've finished a minor, and then after finishing 21, so it probably it took me three or four years to get onto the panel, um, and along with getting drops two or three times with that. So, again, it probably probably helps to where I am mentally um, in the game now and where it will be over the next two or three years. You know, again, I've, I've no intentions um, of, of walking away anytime soon. And look, we're we're here to win all Ireland and we're here to, to enjoy the company of all the women players. And, and that's the main thing. And I suppose a big part of my life now and hopefully it will remain to be over the next three, four years um, with a bit of luck. Uh, how difficult has this period of the last few months been, or did it help with the fact that you were going until December, kind of nearly almost, it was you know a break was welcome in, in some some respect. Yeah, I think I think this is longer than a break now. Um, yeah. over, over the last three months, and uh, look again, I think I think we're all in the same boat uh, since January to now. Um, definitely three or four weeks is is a nice break to get out of it, but from all action all together, I think. In these three months have been difficult for me and I think difficult for other intercounty club players and difficult for all families uh, around the country. So again, the break of three or four weeks are nice, but I think I think three months is um is plenty and looking forward to getting straight back into it um, as soon as possible. Okay, thanks. Hi, how are you doing? It's Gordon I'm here and there uh, your son, how are things? How's it going? How are you? Good, thanks. Um, just to go back on Frank's point there, just about making your breakthrough. Um, I was reading a piece with Paul Clark did an interview a couple of years ago, just talking about. Uh, did you go travelling in two thousand and sixteen? Did you take a go? Uh, yeah. Um, again, look, that wasn't. That was just down to down to not being on the squad, and um, more so than anything, you know, my my first intention just would have been to hopefully be on the county team and to be participating in championship. I know. For, for particular reasons, it didn't work out. So I just um, just travelled abroad um, instead for, for the summertime. But um, again, it was just, look at the end, it's no regrets. Um, it, was, it was a great summer that I had as well. So, and again, like the previous question, it's probably, probably why I'm in a, a, men, a healthy mental mindset in, in terms of my career so far, you know. Did you go to the States that summer or where did you go? Yeah, yeah. So I, I spent two summers in the, in the States. Um, in 2015 and 2016, so I um, spent two summers in Chicago. And during those, so I mean, obviously you're you're still a young lad at that stage, but was there any thoughts that Jesus will this happen for me? Like you know, I'm you know, I'm over here watching the dogs play uh, in Chicago. Like will it happen? Absolutely, and um, plenty of times, plenty of times that that would have crossed my mind, and I suppose probably would have been mostly in 2016, um, and then coming into 2017 season and playing that over on Cup, you know. Probably, probably mentally, I knew it was not knew it was my last opportunity, but knew it was you know, time to give it a go crack um, and do my best to 
get onto the panel. And that was, um, that was again, that was the main focus was just to get on the panel, don't mind getting into starting teams and getting into playing all our finals, you know. Yeah, um, and just finally for me, the Dano Bourne Cup campaign in 17, was it almost like championship football for you? Like, it was, this is it, like, I have to show them that. Absolutely, yeah, look, again, oh, we would have been training for a couple of weeks beforehand, and oh, again, fully, fully focused was on the Dano Cup campaign and trying to impress individually, but again, the best way to impress it is making sure that the team are doing well, you know, and so, and again, lucky enough, um, I played probably three or four good games um, in that campaign, and we obviously went on went on to win it as well, which was probably the bonus for it all. Thanks, Ed. Uh, hi, there's Pat Nolan here uh, from the Mirror. Um, just, um, it's it's a year, I think, on Friday since um, uh, since Leo Bradker, um, I suppose, addressed the nation and, and imposed the lockdown and or the first lockdown of closing the schools and all that. And, um, that, that that was and the, the full round of national league games for that again were pulled. I'm just wondering, but can you remember where you were at that particular moment and um, just what just what you were thinking at that particular time? It was probably the same way. Everybody was thinking that it was only going to be be a short term thing and that we would be now back to back to normal in a couple of months. Um, so I wouldn't have a clue clue where I was at that stage. But I think it was a couple of days after the Tyrone thing, wasn't it? It's about ten days after, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Again, I don't know where where exactly I was, but again, it was definitely a mindset that we would have been back soon enough, um, rather than being in the position that we probably are still. And you would have been prepared to play me that particular weekend, uh, yeah. I think. Yeah. Uh, and just work wise, has it how's it has it has how much has it affected you? But pretty much affected you. Something really anyway. Absolutely. Look, I, I'm working for MFC Sports, a, a leisure wear and sportswear company. And um, so basically, we carry the, the, the leisure wear for clubs and everything. So again, we were seeing the effects that that the virus has had on, on GA clubs and the GA community as well. Um, and yeah, look, like we're not different to any other company. We've, we've definitely felt the effects of it. But again, we're, we're still operating. We're still doing really well. So that's that's good. All right. Fair enough. Thank you. Uh, Niall, Sean Moran in the Irish Times. I'm, I'm just interested in looking at your, your senior career. Do you feel that you changed your game um, from your underage career going up to senior? And uh, you know, how would you characterise the, the, the way you, you were playing when you got into the, the team, the role you've played? Yeah, again, I, I suppose in comparison to, to when I was growing up and playing club football, and, um, I probably would have been more more offensive than, than I am, but again, I suppose in 2017 I played a, a particular style and a particular position and, and the way I played and what I done worked well and, and I suppose it kept me in the team. So again, look, I would have moved away from certain aspects, but I would have generated different aspects of my game that I probably wouldn't have had before, um, which has kept me um, in the squad and on the panel and in the teams today. So. Ram, thank you. Now Shane Stapleton here. How are you doing? Uh, Niall, just wondering, could you explain uh, what we were thinking when Jim Gavin stepped away at the end of uh, of the previous season? Yeah, I suppose look, that's a, a difficult question to answer. I, I suppose look, it definitely wasn't something that we expected, um, and I, I probably didn't see it coming. But again, look, Jim has Jim's done so much for for WGA over over the last number of years in 21s and senior level. So look, he, he came and, and he achieved everything that he possibly could. Um, and I suppose maybe maybe he felt that he, he'd given all he'd gave or, or maybe work was. Um, I don't really, never really thought about it too much. Um, and it was probably, I suppose, like everything else, the, the switch with focus soon, uh, soon after Jim, Jim left to, to where we go from there. And in terms of then what Desi came in, uh, you know, and found in front of him like the COVID and the disrupted season. I mean, he couldn't yeah. have pro possibly, probably had a harder first season in terms of trying to, you know, build on the five in a row best manager Dublin have ever had. So he's done yeah. remarkably well. Yeah, absolutely. Look, uh, I've had Desi for, for five or six years previous to, to this year at minor and 21s. And 
I think no better man to, to step in to the to the senior management. And uh, we'll look again. Definitely a, a tough year to, to start off, but again, very much so. Uh, player led group and Desi trying to facilitate that. So again, there wasn't much changes that, that came our way. Um, but again, it, it worked out well in the end for us. And what, is he is he much different to Jim? Like even just how he would talk to you per, on a personal level. Uh, no, not really. To be honest, now, like the, their football philosophies and, and and that sort of stuff, and their football and styles are very are very similar. And um, there's there's very little very little change between both of them. And um, maybe just as he's more hands on in the drills, um, and and likes to be more involved than maybe Jim would have been. You know. Okay. Thank you. How are you doing? Sky Sports. Um, just a question on, there's obviously been a few people to leave the panel this year. It almost mm-hmm. seems every year there's one or two in, one or two out. Um, this year, Paddy Andrews and Michael Darrell McCauley, as well as Paul Mannion, is it? Is that a big shift in the dressing room? Ah, look, it's definitely three massive presence in the dressing rooms between Paul, Paddy and, and Michael Darrell. Um, so definitely, look, in and around the squad and in and around the dressing room, it, it will be felt. But, um, Again, there's there's a lot of characters in the squad and a lot of characters in the team. So again, it'd be it'd be something that be you'd be missing for a week or a week or so, and then uh, you forget about and going to move on, you know. Yeah. Uh, do you find your role changing almost in terms of leadership or anything? Now you've been in the squad a few years. Yeah. Look again. I think that's something that comes um just comes naturally. It's not something that you ever you see happening. Um, and it's just progressive as progression on age and progression on on your role in the squad. So look, definitely I, I'd like to think that newer lads coming into the panel or younger lads coming into the panel, that I'll be able to be, be an ear for them and give them guidance um, throughout the year and and get them to put their best foot forward, you know, and that's the main thing that once all the squad um, from number 35 to, to number one are performing in training, that, that's only going to benefit the squad at the end of the day, you know. Yeah. Just one question then, just going back to the All-Star last month. Um, yeah. I, I was reading it was on the same weekend as what would have been Anton O'Toole's um, 70th birthday. Was yeah. was it an extra bit special given the significance of the weekend for the club? Or? I, absolutely. Look, Anton is a, is a legend within our club. Um, there's probably not a conversation that goes by um, in the club where, where Anton's name doesn't come up. So again, look, it's a few more to get now to be getting anywhere near him, but definitely, look, it's... It was it was a nice thing to get on the on the same weekend as as his birthday. Cheers, no. Thank you, Neil. No, how are you doing? Paul Keane here from the Examiner. Uh, were you thrown in at the deep end in some ways? I think you made the most appearances of any Dublin player in two thousand seventeen. Basically, coming coming from a, a blank start, really. What was that like? That experience? <laughs> I know, it was it was absolutely brilliant and perfect. And um, and to be honest, look at the end. Like I said, the goal was to get the goal was to get into the squad, and and I ended up being in the starting starting team. And look again, it's, it's something that you don't really dwell on or think about too much. Um, it's, it's really a case of getting out onto the pitch and everything looking after itself. I definitely don't think I was uh, you know my weight or thrown into the deep end. Okay, and I think even though I was just looking at some stats there, I think you've only missed five games in league or championship since then. Does, it feels like you're going to start every day. Is that the mindset you have nearly at this stage? It, most of the time, my mindset would be the exact opposite. Um, in, in terms of, look, we we probably have internal games most most weeks leading into leading into games, and and the mindset very much every every time we step out on the train would be that there's somebody behind me, there's somebody coming to take take the place, and, and that sort of way. So again, not really would I be. Would I be thinking of that? Uh, that was you went to, to be starting. It'd be very far from that. Fair enough. And in your position, what 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 do you measure a good game by? Is it measure? Is it? I know your your kind of offensive and scoring stats have increased a little bit. What yeah. Is it, is it GPS and distance covered and all that kind of stuff? No. Uh, look, uh, the GPS is, is something that we don't really we wouldn't pay too much attention to. It's just more so to figure out the load that you, you've been carrying from training and playing the matches. So I suppose look, a, a good game for me would be how effective I was going forward. Um, am I creating chances? Am I creating scoring opportunities for others? And then more, more importantly, am I getting on the scoreboard myself? Um, I suppose probably early on in my, in my career was probably a, a point or two every, 
every three games and look at over the last year or two with some that I've been trying to improve um, which again look this year it did improve but I think there's a lot more there to to improve on as well just one last one to, I suppose the opening few seconds of the final in December uh, can you kind of look back at that and talk us through that a little bit you had a, kind of a key role in that great start yeah look again it was, it was nothing that was practised in training um, it was literally just in the dressing room and um, the plan that we came up with and again it came it came off far from what we what we planned but again the end results and um, we we had made sure it was a goal and, and it came off so again look I suppose the ball bounced in the right way for, for James uh, and then it went from there. Okay. Thank you. Right, I'm just gonna it's Peter Sweeney here again. I'm just gonna jump in a question there from Declan Welly from RT online. His microphone is uh, broken so we just asked yeah. me to ask you a question. Uh, did you play football the two summers you were in Chicago? He was just wondering. And if yes, just a little bit about it. Yeah, look again I I did. Uh, it was I was my first year there, there would have been a shock to the system, it would have been, would have been small enough and um, they would have been a lot bigger, but again it was it was very competitive and there was, there was a good few of us that went over as well that probably do well in, well in the in the club football over here, but look it, it, was, it was very enjoyable and a, a great experience and, and one I think that stands to me now as well. And who did you play for now? Uh, Mike Royce in Chicago. Perfect, thanks. Hi, Niall, it's Hazel from FM 104. How are you getting on? How's it going? Are we surprised to see the GA lose its elite status under level five now? Look, um, I, don't, I don't really know. I haven't paid too much attention um, into that store detail over the last couple of weeks. You know, I think at the end of the day, um, probably in January and February, the, the cases were extremely high. Um, so again, look, at, I'm much so in, in uh, the same mind, the same thought process as everybody else. I'm just looking to looking to get out of this and um, get out of this pandemic altogether and when whenever the football is safe has come back and um, that's gonna be the case. But again, the main focus for me is is trying to is trying to get over this and hopefully in the coming weeks get into level four or three. We're here today to launch AIG's Dub Club Health. So I suppose the question then is how Difficult has it been for you to maintain your well-being over the last 12 months from all aspects, like not just a physical aspect, but your mental and your social aspect as well? Yeah, look, absolutely. absolutely. I think after after the all Ireland final um, in December there, I probably took three or four weeks off exercise. Um, and I think you could, you would have, if you were around, you would have seen the mood drop um, a good bit. Um, but again, look, I think mentally we're all, we're all feeling that. We're, we're all nearly exhausted at this stage. But again, I suppose that's the the incentive of what AOG are offering here um, and trying to incorporate an opportunity for clubs and members to, to get the mind and body active again and look at again where the case are going down we're looking like we're, we're coming to a bit of action soon enough so again no better time to, to be getting prepared for that thanks man thank you Niall how are you camera can if there's news um any thoughts on the on the new rule around the black card and a on a penalty for, for any cynical food? What's your what's your take on that? You'll you'll have to tell me about it. <laughs> any anything cynical and deliberate inside the, the twenty one or the D is a is a penalty and a black card. A piece yeah. Of it. yeah, I look right. I suppose again it's probably probably going to be a tougher one for, for the referees than, than anybody else and um, i'm trying to again i suppose the referee has to has to make them decisions i, th I think the black card is probably is probably a harsh enough um a harsh enough penalty to pay and um, again I, i'm not too certain on whether uh, a penalty being awarded is going to work perfectly well but again look it's it's definitely i suppose going, going to be trial and, and see how it goes there, there's been a bit of a debate as well about the the All Ireland finals being moved in July and the and the split season. Right? I mean, do you think that'll have an impact on on players, a positive impact or a negative impact? Yeah. Look again. I suppose it, it's something that we're we we do not know and we haven't been in yet and we're we're not used to. Um, and again, like that, I'm not sure whether a split season is the best way going forward. And um, again, but. 
I suppose look at at this age we're all just looking to play looking to play games and, and I think as soon as as soon as club football and intercounty football gets back, um, whichever way they bring it back, it's going to work this year, you know. Do you mean, sorry, do you mind expanding on that on, on why you think this split season maybe isn't the way to go? <laughs> yeah, again, look, I, I, I see again, I wouldn't be too uh, I wouldn't be too knowledgeable about how how they're gonna run it off and how they're gonna play it. Um, but again, I, I suppose is is a fourth three or four month break for club players, what they're looking for, I don't know. Um so again that's just being my, my concern on it. Thanks. Thanks Matt. Thank you. Sorry, uh, uh, thank you. Um, hello? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, just one thing. Um, the the uh, the whole debate about Dublin dominance got amplified obviously when you won the six in a row in December. Have you any view on when you hear all the talk about funding, population, Crow Park, etc. Do you find that is it disparaging of, of what you've actually achieved on the pitch or does it do you, does oh, it pass you by? We're we'll waiting for that one now. <laughs> but um no look again it, it's very much so when we look when we were going to going for five um consecutive all Ireland's, you know, there was hype being built around us and it was very much so a conversation that we all avoided and something that we didn't think about outside of football and then so, something that we definitely don't and will not be bringing into into the squad and um, to be thinking about or discussing again look people are going to going to say what they want to say and they're going to write and um, write that stuff but again our, our, our mindset is only as we say con- control the controllables um, and that's something that we can't so again look and um, it definitely doesn't doesn't hurt me um, and doesn't hurt me yet and um, but again look it's we're here and we're we're doing everything that we can within our power and I suppose that's just something that we can't can't take control of. And I presume with it, in in a club context, I mean, Sing uh, Temple Oak Sing Street. I mean, you're you're anything but what you call a super club. I mean, you're a very old club, but I mean, yeah. you've had struggles like everyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Look, again, it's it's just. A, I don't, I don't really know how to explain the, the dominant space. I, I think it's just anyway, the mindset of all the individuals that have come together over the last five or six years, you know. Um, I think when you think about the, the leaders in the squad, there's, there's never a time that you're not thinking. There's never a time that you're not being challenged. There's never a time that you're not improving. Johnny Cooper, Stephen Cluxon, you know, they're, they're always at you. They're always making you improve. Um, and again, I think that's why probably the standards haven't dropped um, in training and on the pitch maybe over the last number of years. So, yes. Okay, thanks, Al. Thank you. No, Philip Lanigan here in the, in the mail. How are you doing? How's it going? Um, no, there was, there was so many surreal elements to last year's championship and just reading about you that kind of after you won, I think you were sitting at home with a, with a couple of bottles of beer. Like, did it feel like a six in a row? Um, I, I don't know. Look, it, it's very much so the Dublin dominance bit as well. The the five in a row and the six in a row aren't something that that come into our mind and something that we're playing for. You know, I think in fairness to Desi, he came in and he wanted to throw away everything that had been done in the past. Um, and I think this this year's All Ireland was was more so for for him. I felt like I owed it to him for for the six or six or five years that he'd given me um, throughout the year to minor and 21s and look again 85,000 taking out of the stadium 100% is going to notice it um, not being able to to go out after the game and enjoy it and um, the squad again something that you're going to, going to notice but again the, the enjoyment and the feel um, at the final whistle definitely was, was no different to, to any previous year and did you get a chance to mark it in your own way, whether with family or with the lads? You know, I don't know when you could have a Zoom celebration, but like, did, did you get a chance to kind of mark it in any way? I look, not really. I suppose the, the day after the game, it would have been more so, I suppose, an into Obviously, you were only allowed four at the table at the time and all that sort of stuff, and you couldn't have been booking out pubs um, as everybody was trying to get into them at that stage. But again, my dad would have met up with a couple of them and the day after the game for, for a few points. But again, like that, we, we only had the hour 45 on the table and then we were, then we were held on. But look, again, it's, 
I suppose it's, it's all the more reason to, to get this year in, in order to go with Bash. Cheers, Matt. Thank you. Hi, hi, it's uh, Gordon Manning here again. Can I just, just on that team, can I take you back to maybe simpler times? In 2012, I suppose you were allowed to go out and celebrate after that minor win. Yeah. I, know, I know Davey Byrne has talked about it, but I'm not sure if you have uh, since the, the night with uh, Daniel Ratcliffe. What's, what's your kind of memories of that? Oh, God. Um, now, fair and so I was, it, was a, it was a long day and a long night. Uh, but, um, I, I was back in Davey's before Davey was back in his own house. Uh, yeah. So again, it was me and one of the couple of lads were there. But again, all I remember is is one one of them coming in and saying, "Here, Daniel Radcliffe's outside." And I was like, "This, I go away with you." Uh, definitely isn't. And then he came in, um, all the same. And and again, look, it was it was tame enough. There was nothing nothing special happening. Just a few few magic tricks was about it. <laughs> the, and like, were you a Harry Potter fan, or like, did you know who he was? And that kind of stuff? I love you. One hundred percent, I knew knew who he was. Uh, would again wouldn't have been an insane fan, but again, look, it's it's Daniel Radcliffe all the same. So um, definitely a, a well-known celebrity for that. Again, it was a surreal moment, and again, there was a, a lot of attention that came from that as well. But again, it was it was something that will will probably travel with for for a few years to tell stories about as well. Yeah, I think you were in one of the pictures. I just did a picture of a couple of years in the U. I don't, I, yeah, I don't look too well in the photo. Of course, we saw it in a, in a salmon top. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Thank you.